but a woman in Hong Kong whose name is um, Anita Mujani. She's an author, a Hay House author now, and she's written a book, a powerful book. And I read this story about um, Anita, and it seems that uh, on the 2nd of February, in the year 2006, this woman <clears throat> was wheeled into a hospital in Hong Kong. She had been sick for five years. Her organs had all shut down. Her family was gathered at the emergency room. Her husband, who was here tonight, I'm honored to have met a beautiful man named Danny. And the doctors had told her family and her husband uh, that these were her last hours. She was down to 86 or 88 pounds. Uh, Anita emerged from her coma, some 30 hours in a coma. And she has a story to tell that is so compelling. And she's here from Hong Kong to share with you some of the lessons that she learned while she was in this comatose state and what she came back to teach us. She's one of the most beautiful human beings I've ever been privileged to know and honored to support and write a foreword for her book. And she's here with us today and I'd love you to meet her. Anita Mojane, please come on. Be seated. Thank you. Hi. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Tell us, Anita. Um, you're uh, in a coma. Your husband is whispering in your ear. Your mother is there. Your brother's on his way to see you. Everybody's waiting for you to take your last breath. What were you observing, and what did you learn, and what did you come back to teach us? Wow. There's so much there. Um, even though I was in a coma, I was actually aware of everything that was happening around me. I'm sorry, I still get emotional when I think of that state. It was, it was five years ago, but I still remember it as if it was, it was yesterday. Um, I was in a coma, but I was aware of everything the doctors were doing. I was aware of my husband. My mother was crying. She was, um, because the doctors had told them that that I only had a few more hours to live. My organs had shut down and these were my last hours. And, uh, and I wanted to assure them that, uh, that I was feeling fine, that I was feeling great. But I couldn't. I, I couldn't understand why I couldn't communicate with them. And each time it felt as though I was getting involved in the drama and my emotions were being pulled towards feeling for my mother and my brother. At the same time, it was as though I was being pulled away. And it was as though my energy or my awareness or consciousness was just expanding. And it was just expanding and expanding and just getting bigger and bigger. And it felt as though I could feel what everybody was feeling. I could feel what my husband was feeling. Uh, what my mother was feeling and the doctors as they were running around uh, trying, to, trying to save my life. And then I became aware of what I can only describe as unconditional love. It was as though I was, it was as though I was just surrounded or embraced by this unconditional love. And when I say unconditional, I mean really unconditional. It was like I didn't have to do anything to prove myself or to be anything or uh, it, I was loved unconditionally regardless. It, it was as though um, even, even things that I could have perceived to have done wrong in my life, it wasn't as though I was being judged. There was no judgment whatsoever. There was only compassion. It was like compassion, and it was like I understood in that state why 
why I would do whatever I did in life. Mm. It was everything I did was out of the limitation of being in a physical body. So you were looking at your body and uh, you were given a choice, is that right, whether to get back into this sick, sick body That's which, right. uh, or not and um, what did you do? I became aware, actually I became aware of the presence of my father. He had passed away 10 years before me. Mm -hmm. And I also became aware of my best friend who had passed away two years before and I had missed her desperately because she was like a sister to me. Did you feel when you were in that near-death experience state in that coma watching it that coming back also meant um, that you had something to teach everyone and what was it that you felt you had to teach them? I felt that I had to come back because there was a greater purpose because at first I didn't want to come back into my body because my body was so sick and it, there was just so much unconditional love on that side. It's really, really hard to leave. So if anybody has lost anyone, I can completely understand why they would stay there. But also, I seem to get the message. I seem to understand that it wasn't my time and I had a mission. I had a purpose and I had not yet fulfilled. And I seemed to understand that even in order to fulfill my purpose, I wouldn't have to really go and figure it out or I wouldn't have to pursue anything. I would just have to go back and live fearlessly and just not be afraid to be myself. And that's all I had to do. I also sensed that my husband and I still had a purpose to fulfill. My husband is, he's truly my soulmate because he was there talking to me all the way through, talking in my ear and holding my hand and I was aware of that. You learned some very important things. Yes. Was it like just about being positive, to be a positive thinker? Was that... Uh... No, in fact, being positive is not enough. I used to always be positive because I was a people pleaser. I used to always stay positive because I never wanted to bother anyone or trouble anyone. I learned that more important than being positive is being yourself. I learned that that's actually the most important thing is to be yourself. Um, because that's why we're here. We're here because we're, we're facets of, of one. It was as though we are all one. Without my body, it felt as though I was connected to everyone and everything. Was fear a big part of your life and, uh, and had something to do with, uh, with this, being your Ill. being sick? Yes, fear was a big part of my life before I was sick. I used to live a life in fear, a fear of not being good enough, uh, fear of uh, everything, fear of illness, um, fear of not meeting other people's expectations. And, um, but my near-death experience taught me that there's nothing to fear. In fact, uh, when I was given the choice, I felt I reached a point where I had the choice of whether to come back or not. And it was my father and my best friend who actually said, now that you know who you truly are, go back and live your life fearlessly. And have you been doing that? Yes, I have. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Anita Mirzani.